I recently wrapped up a lengthy job search that resulted in three data science job offers and successfully pivoted myself into big tech. And even though I'm happy with the final result, I made a lot of mistakes along the way and it was a long and difficult process. So I wanted to make a video going over my background, the mistakes I made, and what I would have done differently. And if this video helps even one person get into data science, then I will consider it a success. Because job seeking is a miserable process and I'd like to help others make it not so miserable. First off, I want to talk a bit about my background because I think it's relevant to share how I got into data science and why it's important to follow your passions. Because if I've learned anything from the interview process, it's that interviewers can tell when you're not passionate about something and they will not give you a second chance to prove that. So it's a lot easier for interviews if you don't have to fake interest in something. So for my background, I came from a top 10 university with a degree in physics and computer science. And I mention this because I think it's important to note that you don't need a degree in computer science in order to get into data science. In fact, a lot of the other data scientists I've met have gotten degrees in other sciences, including geology, hydrology, and even biology. I also mentioned that I came from a top 10 university because I think everybody wonders how helpful that actually is when it comes to finding jobs. Obviously, in my experience, nobody ever tells you that they were persuaded to give you an interview because they saw your university. It definitely doesn't feel like things were significantly easier, but I assume that it did give me an edge in some cases. In my experience, though, recruiters care more about what you've actually done rather than what university you went to. I know plenty of people who went to no-name schools and ended up at really prestigious careers, and vice versa. And when it came to picking my degree, I chose physics purely because I thought it was interesting. And this ended up actually being extremely relevant to my first job out of college, which was as a data scientist in the energy consulting sector. And while energy was one of my primary focuses while working on my degree, it was mainly nuclear energy. But the skills and background knowledge still translated pretty well. I didn't end up using any quantum mechanics in the job, which is unfortunate given that I took two whole classes on it but I did get to work on energy flux calculations for grow lights, which was an application of my degree that I did not think I would have. I'm also very glad that I minored in computer science because data scientists have to do a lot of coding. And for some perspective, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my physics degree once I graduated. I actually had no idea what you could even do with a physics degree except go into more school and get a PhD. And I didn't have any job lined up after graduating, which was probably my first big mistake. I was just so focused on school and getting done with it that I had never given any thought to what would come after. And job searches take a lot of time. I was lucky that it only took me a couple of months to find a job in my hometown, which is where I moved after graduating, but honestly, if I could have taken more time to apply to jobs and been more flexible on location, it probably would have been much better for my career. But at the time, I didn't know these things. I didn't even know that I wanted to go into data science, let alone what it even was. So I never planned any relevant internships or made connections with people also interested in that field. So if you're in that stage, definitely make connections with as many people as possible. I can't emphasize enough the importance of networking, not only for finding jobs, but for talking with other people and figuring out what you want to do. That's a good segue to my next topic, finding out what interests you and where do you even find jobs. Like I said, I had no idea that I even wanted to do data science after graduating. I filtered job search sites to my specific city and looked for anything technical or analytical that I could do rather than something that I wanted to do. My first in-person interview that I did was for a database engineer position. And I remember showing up in a suit and tie and having them ask me questions about projects that I did in my CS classes. And I'm actually extremely thankful that those people chose not to hire me because I remember listening to them describe the job position and it sounded so incredibly dull, but I was still trying to appear interested so that they would give me money. But for my latest job search, I knew a little bit more about what I wanted to do. I knew I could be flexible on location and I really wanted to get into big tech. So I focused on major tech cities. And it turns out because of COVID, it doesn't really matter which city you apply for because a lot of those positions are remote anyways. I also wanted to talk about job posting sites like LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter. I didn't really have a great experience with them. I mainly use LinkedIn for my most recent job search and just give a keyword search for a data scientist position in a couple of different tech cities. 
And because I had imposter syndrome and was very stressed about the job search process, I ended up applying for basically every job posting that I could find on LinkedIn. I barely read job descriptions and I took a complete shotgun approach to applications. I even used LinkedIn's easy apply button, which I absolutely do not recommend. Not only was my response rate really low, but because I was applying for jobs without really looking at descriptions or looking into the companies themselves, I ended up opening myself up to a whole lot of spam from tech recruiters. Tech recruiters who were very unprofessional and tend not to call you back even if you give them your information for a specific job. They were generally also looking to fill contract positions, which is not what I was looking for. Nothing against contract positions, they usually pay a lot more to make up for their lack of benefits, and some people find the flexibility convenient. So if you want to focus on contract positions, just make sure you work with a reputable tech recruiter and you can find their website and a history of reviews that show that they actually respond to people. So as a consequence of my shotgun approach, I was flooded with spam and got a whole bunch of interviews for companies that I didn't actually really want to work for. Though, as an upside, a lot of those company interviews ended up being really good practice for companies that I did want to work for. Now for my next big mistake, I also copy and pasted pretty much every cover letter for all of these different companies. I highly recommend that you research every company you apply for carefully, read the job description carefully, and that way you can edit your resume and cover letter specifically to that job. Pretty revolutionary advice, I know, but your cover letter is really your only chance to convince a recruiter to give you an interview. The more prestigious big tech companies are going to have thousands of applicants, all with very qualified resumes and probably employee referrals on top of that. So you're going to need very good writing skills and a great cover letter to convince a recruiter that you're passionate about the job you're applying for. And you should really try to be as specific as possible in your cover letter about what specifically qualifies you for that position over other people. Now let's talk about referrals. Like I mentioned before, I was bad at networking in college. I was and still am an introvert. But you're going to need other people if you want to be successful. It's unavoidable, so we all have to develop our communication skills regardless of our natural tendencies. And it is worth noting that I didn't have any referrals for the positions that I applied for, and I still ended up getting three offers and was in final interviews for three other places. Referrals are really only good for getting your foot in the door and are generally not considered when it comes to interview performance. That being said, getting your foot in the door is extremely helpful. So if you don't currently know anybody in the industry who you can invite out to lunch, then you can still do this. Get on your phone and go to the app store and get an app called Blind. It's generally used for professionals in tech to share salaries and total compensation, but there are also a lot of people out there willing to help others in the community when it comes to referrals. So when you've done your research and you know specifically what companies and what positions you want to apply for, you can go on Blind, make a post requesting for a referral to those companies. Obviously, don't expect magic to happen and have someone see your post and just give you a referral. Make sure you put some effort into your post and describe your background and why you're interested in the position. Treat it like a cover letter and emphasize your accomplishments in the most non-braggy way possible so that people will actually take an interest in you. That way, they'll reply to you and tell you that you can DM them for a referral. Next, let's talk about skill set. I was in my first position for four years and I learned a lot about data science in that time. But before that, I basically had no experience whatsoever. I didn't do any data science boot camps or take any classes. And most prestigious companies are probably not going to accept that. And even if they did, you should still take a basics of data science course just so that you can learn the language of data scientists. And you're going to want to understand the different areas of specialization of data science. That way you'll be able to know what you don't know. And that's a good first step in knowing what you want to do and what you're going to be interested in, whether it's going to be statistical analyses, business analytics, or deep learning for computer vision or natural language processing. There's thousands of different unique applications of data science and hundreds of different areas of specialization, and no one person is capable of learning them all. So an introductory bootcamp is a great place to start to figure out what you like and what you don't like. You will also likely be taking many such classes over the course of your career anyway. It's just the price of staying relevant and up to date on a rapidly changing field. So if you're looking for some recommendations, some good ones that I've taken are Machine Learning A through Z, Hands-on Python and R and Data Science by Kirillo Romanko and Hadeline de Pontevé on Udemy, Python for Data Science and Machine Learning Bootcamp by Jose Portilla on Udemy also, 
Hands-on Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras, and TensorFlow by Aurelien Guerin. This one I bought the book for. I also think Jeremy Howard's Fast AI course and his book, Deep Learning for Coders with Fast AI and PyTorch, is really excellent once you've taken one of the other data science basics courses. Additionally, a lot of prestigious companies are going to expect that you have some software engineer and data engineer skills. So you will likely want to brush up on your coding, generally Python and SQL, using Leet code. It took me two months of about 40 hours a week of dedicated work time to finish two data science courses, reading the books cover to cover, finishing all of the chapter exercises, brush up on my coding, and do an entire Kaggle competition with what I had learned from the courses before I felt like I was ready to start applying for jobs and interviewing. And I'm really glad I did all that because I was asked many questions in interviews that I would not have known if it had not been fresh in my mind. So it's important to remember, interviews are not a measure of how smart you are. They're not even really a measure of how well you could do the job. Most technical interviews just test how well you can prepare and then communicate and present answers with a bit of general critical thinking and a little bit of luck to make sure that they don't ask questions that you didn't study for. Which kind of brings me to probably the best advice that I can give on this subject, which is don't give up. You can definitely do it. It's really hard, but if you keep interviewing and keep working on the skills that you get asked about in interviews, you'll not only get really good at the technical aspect of the interview, but you'll also become better at the behavioral questions as well. And then you'll start to come off as more confident and seem like a better candidate. Interviewing is a skill in and of itself that you'll just get better at with practice and time. And every failure you have is another opportunity to get better. We all fail and you'll get dozens of rejections before you ever get one offer. It's part of the process and it does not mean that you're dumb. Sometimes someone will just be a little bit better than you. Or it'll be completely subjective and based on a personality decision. Or it'll be something completely out of your control like the interviewer was having a bad day. So just find what you're passionate about, keep working at it, and you'll automatically be more successful than 90% of the people out there. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more data science and machine learning content, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed.